Hello, everyone. Welcome to Going Rogue. I'm Andrew DiMolanta. And I'm Nikki DiMolanta. So, um, obviously, second pre-taped episode. Um, I'm, I'm liking this format. I'm not so much pressure going live. I don't think live streaming was our forte. Um, that right? Yeah, I mean, it was fun for, for what we have, but I, I like this. It's much more relaxed. It's just you and I here. Um, our last week, we talked about uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. And it actually kind of helped um in my past this past week yeah, <laughs> yeah in, in some ways okay so I'm, I'm glad that we went over that again um but uh, as per usual the form of the show um going over uh the disney gallery which i have not gone up on <laughs> for obvious reasons i'm sticking to watching other star wars things for the time being i, I might get back into those because i'm what like three episodes behind you should really get into these because i know you enjoyed mandalorian and uh yeah, I think it's a fun peek behind the curtain. For me, I'm I'm always like a if I get like Blu-rays or DVDs, I always like watching the special features because I, I love watching the process and seeing how these films are made. I'm more so. of a outtake kind of gal, <laughs> <laughs> but I might be persuaded. I th- yeah, I, I think you should for you know just at least watching um, the one with the the volume. I I, I told you and Roka when he was on that that just blew my mind. Yeah. It blew my mind that episode. Um, but I'm not behind on those, so I'll catch up on those. And then we, um, since we, I haven't watched those, um, we got to catch up on some Star Wars news. And there's a, wasn't a whole lot. I mean, there's a couple of like the pop up guide, ultimate pop up guide to the galaxy, uh, got released. Uh, Queen's Pearl, I think. Like got, another, uh, isn't there already? Yeah, I actually have one back here uh, for oh, audio. I think I got that for you. Yeah. Yeah, for like Christmas or something. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you can see it's like our video watchers. It's like. The bottom half of our, our bookshelf over here for the audio mm. listeners. Sorry, <laughs> you can't it's, see. It's buried in there. We can't. We can't yeah, grab it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna grab it. Um, but yeah, a Queen, new one, like what, including new movies and stuff. Yeah, probably. like it, they always do it. They update it, and this one's like I think I read that it was like the ultimate edition of it. But I think another thing that got released this past week was the uh, Jedi Challenge on YouTube. <gasps> Yes. Did not watch it. Legends of the Hidden Temple, but Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. I, I was like, oh man, this sounds you know, awesome. If I was a kid, I'd be all about like asking mom to like, get me on the show. I want to be on the show. It would be so cool. And I like that uh, Ahmed Best is returning to the Star Wars galaxy, yes. so to speak. Um, hit, Good for him, because he yeah. deserves to have some positive oh, Star yeah, Wars in his life. Oh, and he got a great standing ovation the last celebration in uh, Chicago. He did. And um, just... The, the the love for Ahmed Best is because like we, we saw it with the prequels and I think we're gonna see it with the sequel trilogy. It's like there's all this like divide between the fans right now for the everything that Disney. Give it time. Just let it sink in, give it time. And when these kids that were introduced to Star Wars through these new movies grow up to be our age, then you can see all this positivity. And that we certainly saw this saw that with the prequels and we certainly saw that with Ahmed Best. And um just a well, those are the things that I've heard about, it, like Ahmed Best is like his, he's not playing Ahmed Best. He's not Ahmed Best in the show. He's got he's, like a character. He's playing a character that's a, a, a Jedi master. I think he was a member of the council at one point, but his character apparently is canon. And he, Good. And for him, he says that it's loosely related to his cameo in Attack of the Clones. Um, Akbeg Beck. Um, mm. We don't know if he's his father. We don't know if he's like a twin or something. We have no idea what when this show is in. in, uh, in for my audio listeners, I'm putting quotations like when it's show. in when it's in the timeline of of the Star Wars canon. So, but for as far as I know, he's saying that yeah, my character is canon. He does exist in the Star Wars universe, and he's loosely related to this other character that I played. I wonder if he has like a backstory. Like, what is your? St- are you training Padawans? Is that what the show is? Yeah, it's, it's, I guess. Yeah, the, the winners of the show. Um, become Jedi and nice or something like that. I, I'm very, I, I've been very loose on news and uh, for obvious reasons, um, studying for the Schmodown. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in watching this. I heard it's a great time. I, like, I loved Legends of the Hidden Temple when I was little. Oh, yeah. So I'm down. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just got Ahmed Best and a droid instead of... I think there's two droids. There's like a purple... What was his name? Steve? I mean, I feel like every host from shows <laughs> that when we were little was Steve. Steve. And Olmec, the big face that he used to talk to. <laughs> Yeah. It's just now it's, it's just, I'm at best enjoyed. It, it looks like a lot of fun. It's geared towards the younger audience, obviously, because it's it's not airing on Disney Plus, I don't think, but it's on their YouTube channel, and that's where a lot of like the younger because those animated things, the Star Wars galaxies, the story galaxies, they, uh, they, the they, the ones on Disney Plus. No, no, the one the ones on the YouTube channel would be short, like almost like minute long things that animate the original 
um, audio, take the original audio from like the movies oh, and stuff. You've seen those? No. Those are fantastic. I'm thinking there are shorts on Disney Plus. You're thinking not what of you're talking, yeah, you're about. thinking of um, forces. Forces of Destiny. Destiny. Was the female characters? Yes. Yeah, those are really cool too. They're they're, they're fun. There there's some that are like we really don't need that because they happen in between. Like, I mean, do we need any of it? <laughs> but they're fun. But yeah, they're fun. But like these these uh, Star Wars. Um, I can't. The name escapes me. But they, there's these little animated things that's on the Star Wars for kids YouTube channel. I'm like, this is for kids. The animation is awesome, and they, it looks at the the original trilogy and all the movies from like a different angle. Fun. And it's. It's really cool. I I, I think you should. No, I haven't watched. Them, so. I, I I showed you a couple. I think you probably. Would, I think you would really. Attention. They're they're like a minute long, but they're like really cool. So it's it's. I think it's to get kids interested in, of uh, the galaxy. It does that kind of? Thing and, and, and the animation actually. is really cool. I'm like these. It's like I enjoy these, and these are supposed to be for kids. So I have to revisit. Them. Yeah. So yeah, this is a it's a perfect place for the, the show to live is on YouTube. Um, and, and I know YouTube right now is trying to steer away from like scripted stuff, but that's the platform itself. So you, companies can do whatever the heck they want with the, the platform. So yeah. I think it's a great, great place for it. But I think another big thing that I, I wanted to touch on, um, where is it? The Mandalorian um, season two um, brought on uh, the stunt coordinator from the extraction, and uh, he's a Marvel veteran. So he's he's already part of the Marvel, like the, the Disney family mm-hmm. being connected to the MCU films, but he also um, did uh, um, for the uh, extraction with uh, Chris, Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, and this movie's getting rave reviews. Oh, yeah. I have not seen it. I want to watch it. It's on Netflix, but I heard amazing things about it. Yeah, I've only heard good things and, about and, it. And like, the trailer that I watched, like, this looks insane. And if they're bringing something like that on, and I could be reading this wrong, I, I, I believe this is the... Like a stunt guy? Stunt I think coordinator? it's a stunt coordinator. Um, to do stunts for the Mandalorian. Yeah. Oh no, so um, Mandalorian brought uh, in the director. Um, yeah. So the director of the extraction. Oh. Is brought in to do to coordinate um, action sequences for the Mandalorian. So that sounds awesome to me, because there were some some points in the Mandalorian was like the action could have been molded a little more. Polished. A little, a little, like, that's a good word for it. It could have been polished up a bit more. Um, just to you know, make it a little bit more exciting. And obviously, they're limited with budget and, and things like that. Because, um, but uh, I think this is awesome news, because um, he's the man who learns a, a a bad dude. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah. I'm trying to swear on the show, but he's, he's a, a bad mofo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like the little little action sequences we got in here and there, I'm like, wow, oh, that was really cool. But I really wanted a little bit more. Like, give me some some like these men learn supposed to be like you know the. They went up against Jedi in the Mandalorian Wars yeah. against Jedi. So it's like, I want to see that type of action. Ruthless. Shh. Yeah, ruthless. Like, just, like, because I've had this before, like, the Mandalorian showed Spartans of, of Star Wars universe. Like, they're, like, Sounds top. Right. Yeah. It's like, so I want to see that kind of action. And bringing this guy in, um, I turned my phone off. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Um, but bringing him in, uh, I think, can only do great things for the show. What do you think? I don't know. I thought it was a director to direct action sequences. Yes. I mean, you can read the headline if you want. <laughs> no, no. It's not that I don't believe you, but it's just yeah, like, <laughs> I, the dir- I didn't read the, the article. I mean, I'm being, I'm to be. Action director and Marvel veteran Sam Hargrave to direct season two action sequences. Mm-hmm. So I didn't read the full article. I'm being poor about my homework this week um, because, mm. because the, at the time of, of this recording, last night was my match against Joseph Scrimshaw. And all my attention was on that. A so, bit. So. Same. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm, sh- I'm sure it's a good decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, when I think of like doing action sequences, I think of like a stunt coordinator. So it, mm-hmm. it, it, it hit me as kind of weird initially when you say maybe. a director and yeah. not a stunt coordinator. Well, this, so looking at this way, maybe like he brings a different angle of portion. So maybe he, he's like, because, you know, stunt coordinator can, you know, make sure everybody's safe on set, make sure like, you know, the moves look cool, but then the director can come and go, move the camera over here. I would like okay. to see it from this angle. So maybe he has something that he wants to see. And okay. since he's a that Marvel veteran, um, and Mar- for the most part, Marvel action has been pretty solid, especially the, uh, um, 
the, the elevator scene. Yeah, the elevator scene from Winter Soldier. A lot of the Captain America stuff I absolutely love, and the, yeah. whatever the Russo brothers have been have a hand in, they actually been has been handled pretty well. Um, so I'm excited for this this news, um, and I'm just excited for um, season two of Mandalorian just flat out. So yeah, um, that's great. So um, yeah, that's that's what we have um, up top. Um, I think what we're going to go go ahead and get into is the main topic of tonight's show, and that is humor in Star Wars. Um, yes. I really wanted to get Joseph in on this one. I did too. I really wanted to, but he's a busy guy. He, I emailed him, and he's like, "Yeah, I won't be able to commit until you know further down the road because he's, he's a busy guy. Other than you know busy studying for Shmodan, obviously, busy he's got a lot of projects. He said he has to catch up on. So um, I really would like to have him. I'll we'll think of something else to talk about when you have him on. But um, I, um, yeah, Star Wars humor in Star Wars has always been there. Yes. Um, whether with it's with certain characters or with certain plot points. I just want to um, just touch on like what we like, what we don't like, what works, what doesn't work. So just right off the bat, just off the top of your head, like what um, movies pop out to you when it comes to humor in Star Wars? Which ones do you think really worked for you? I think that it's an easy answer to say that the sequels, because mm -hmm. they're more modern. Like when you look at mm -hmm. the original trilogy, they're kind of dated. I mean, With the well, uh, it's not like the humor is dated. It's not like they were making jokes about like yeah. you know doing the twist, the Tootsie Roll, or whatever. <laughs> people that was probably before 1977. Yeah. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's not that the humor was dated. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, it feels different. It feels more like you know dad mm -hmm. jokes kind of thing to yeah. me, at least it, it was, sometimes. It, yeah, it was the humor geared towards that generation. Yeah, I mean there are some things that work. Um, like with Han in the detention block, it's like, oh, how, oh, how are you? I do, I do that, really that, enjoy yeah. that scene. Yeah, <laughs> um, but there are other things that's like, I mean, because it, it's a generational thing. It's it's always Star Wars is told. It's basically the same story, just yeah. told for a different generation. Yeah, and people always want to argue. Oh, it's the same, it's visiting the same beats and whatever, whatever. It's like, yeah, it's always the same message of like hope, good versus evil. It's just told for a different generation. Yeah. So I and the humor is all, absolutely. The same way. Han's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like he was at his haniest, what do we say, like an empire? or return. Yeah, I, I would say he's uh, he's the most Han in empire. Yeah. Like that, uh, you know, just we'll just jump all over the place, I'm sure. But like that yeah. scene where he's like, oh, no, fine. How are you? Yeah. I love that scene. It makes me laugh every time. <laughs> um, there was, there's, oh, there was another one that was like just in my head and it just fell out. Mm -hmm. What I, do you remember from what movie? No, <laughs> it, it was either from an Empire or Return. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like Han's delivery is just—I feel like he has the best. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't really, and I, I feel like probably C three PO and R two are supposed to be a source of comedic relief in the yeah. original trilogy. But I find C three PO to just be, be kind of like little. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he was just so he's very, nasty. Yeah, he, like he was just so yeah, nasty. He was, yeah, he was very negative. Negative towards R2. Not he was negative. Just he was just calling all these names and like like I, saying all this crap to him, and then being like, uh, "You're all right." Sometimes you're all right. You know. I I do like the moments with um when uh Luke is is cleaning up R2 and he, he has to go walk away to go you know, dinner, or or like he he messes up on like the um. The message, like he stops playing it on purpose, and he's like, "What message?" And he just whacks him on the head. It's like the one you've been playing. And like I like moments like that, like yeah. playful moments between R two and three. Playful are, moments, are but fun. sometimes C three feels like, "Wow, pull yeah. it back." Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, you know, within reason. It's, yeah, he never gets that bad, but it, you know, there are sometimes we're like, "Geez, you're kind of a jerk." Yeah, but yeah, I enjoy I enjoy Han's humor the most in the original trilogy. Yeah, and uh, we were watching it the other night with uh. Han, the moment between Han and Luke in the Falcon, after Leia leaves the cockpit, and like Luke's like, "What do you think, of Han?" And she's like, "All right." And then he sees like, "Oh, good." It's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be." He's trolling Luke. Yes. Like, that, that's like classic. Han. You just I made me think of the moment that I forgot earlier, mm -hmm. and it was after Luke, on after Hoth, mm -hmm. and when Luke's getting all healed up. Yeah. And um, doesn't he kind of make fun of him there? Like, mm -hmm. it was right before Leia actually kisses. Luke. Wasn't uh -huh. he giving him a hard time? Or he was giving Leia a hard time? He was giving Leia a hard time. Yeah, and I just thought it was great. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's just such a troll. Yeah, he ruffles people's feathers. I love it. Like, you think a, 
a guy like me and a princess. And he's just, he, I don't think he was going to say that, but you could just see his face. Like he's saying something to Luke. He can obviously tell that Luke and is like yeah. down. And then he's like, <laughs> still. What do you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, because like Luke in the moment, moment is like, well, what do you think of Han? And he's like, I'm trying not to. I, don't, I don't really don't like this chick. And then Luke's like, good. Yeah, okay, cool. And then Han sees that moment yeah. and he's like, Oh, okay, well, you know, still, she, you know, she's got a lot of spirit, you know. What do you think? Yeah. She's pretty thick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she and then thick. Luke's like, no, I don't like that. And, he, <laughs> and, and Han's just, just like, you know, yeah, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, that think, kind of stuff is funny. Yeah, Han is, is one of those characters, I think he's not meant to be funny, but the, mo- the moments are funny. Like R2 and 3PO meant to be the comic relief of the movie. Chewie, yeah. Chewie is also one of those characters that's meant to be the comic relief of the, yeah. of the movies. That's um, true. Chewie has subtle humor because yeah. obviously he's not saying... The whole hands behind the back, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I can totally... <laughs> and there was, isn't there another scene? The trash compactor scene when they get out and like he, he runs away after Han blasts the dino. Well, yeah, that. And it's like, Chewie, come here. And he's just like, no. Mm-hmm. no. <laughs> and wasn't there a scene where in the Falcon where like they did something and Chewie just gets really frustrated and he oh. just starts like... Oh, yeah, that's in, in Empire. I always lo- I'm glad you brought that up because this is my favorite Chewie moments in Empire. It's always after the, the, the hyperdrive fails to work on the Falcon. Um, my favorite moment of that was when Lando tries to go in light speed and it doesn't work. And like, Chewie's like, God, I got I to do, <laughs> gotta do everything. everything. Got to do everything myself. And he actually pushes Lando out of the way. He's like, get out of the way. I got to do everything myself. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah, he's got he's got good stuff. Chewie's, Chewie's got some some good, and it also translate it also like transfers over to um like the the newer movies with uh the whole moment with uh when he's on the base in Dakar with the doctor and he's like oh yeah. you must be so brave it's like oh yeah yeah you know I do what I do <laughs> and the moment with Han in uh the the freighter when he's like um uh when uh, Han's like oh how many like have I, have I ever doubted you? Not, not, like what, what's <laughs> Yeah. Ever let you down before? And then Paul Tick and, and Tasha was like, yeah, yeah twice. twice. And Chewie was like, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that works so great with Chewie. Um, but like, while we're on the sequel um, movies, because like, you said the, the humor works best for you in the sequels. Yes. Um, and I also, if we're going to narrow it down even further, mm-hmm. I like the humor in 7 and 9 better than I did in Yeah, you like the way Abrams handles the humor. I do. Mm-hmm. I felt that the humor in eight just felt like a little forced, a little pun, shoehorn. Pun intended. A little yeah. forced. Forced humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good. good. <laughs> you know, I do yeah. feel like it was a little like. It was too. In your face. Like the whole, the movie starts out with a your mom joke. Mm-hmm. Like I did enjoy the whole general hugs thing. I thought it went on a smidge too long yeah. for me. And then it ends with a your mama joke, and it's like, we're better. Than yeah, this. Let, let's save the last Jedi stuff for when we are talking about things that don't really work for us. All right, we'll back it up. So let's talk about a little, how JJ handles the humor. In, 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 uh, so, like, it's okay, so it's easy to pick things out in The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And it's uh, the especially because it's the most recent, and I think that we, uh, we watched it pretty recently, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, Poe and Zori. Yeah, that's great. I think Poe works the best for me. He's hilarious. Yeah, but I would also say that Therepio is probably the best he's ever been. I agree. In The Rise of Scott. One hundred percent. He is the best I think he's been in any movie, and yeah. it's no fault of Anthony Daniel. No, no, no. It's I and think... some people might disagree with us, mm-hmm. but I do personally believe that C three PO is the best he's ever been in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, not not just character, but like more specifically with the humor. Yeah, that's the, too. The whole like when they're underneath the when they get on the seeking fields. And it's like you didn't say you didn't say my name, but I'm all right, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the afterlife? Are droids allowed here? Yeah. <laughs> that was and that's that was another part of that scene where they fall underneath and mm-hmm. you know, we're just gonna be jumping all over the place. Oh yeah, here. Well, yeah. but like when, you know, Ray ignites her lightsaber mm-hmm. and then Poe like ding heavily <laughs> dings on his flashlight. The sound effects is what makes that joke. <laughs> because it's so puny. Yeah. That sound effects makes it so cause like you get this, you know, everybody's like, the iconic the big bolt, like you feel in your bones, and that little ding. It's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> what else happened? That oh, man, like, like it's so much. The stuff. banter between um, Poe, Finn, and uh, and Ray is yeah. so like I know people might have a problem with it. I enjoyed like the I enjoyed, I enjoyed the crap out of, of their dynamic. It. Like when they first arrived at Agent Class, mm-hmm. and she's like, 
you know, what happened to the Falcon? Mm-hmm. What happened to my droid? Yeah. And they, you know, go yeah, back and forth there. I really enjoyed that bickering. <laughs> you know what you are? A difficult man. <laughs> difficult man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, he's like, you're a, mm. <laughs> There's just so many. Like I think Poe probably has like some of the most memorable humor, humor, humorous moments. Yeah. Uh, in this movie, um, I think the most obvious is though at the very end when he sees Zoria across like the crowd, and he's like, "Oh yeah," like comrades, like "Yeah, yeah, cool." And then he's like, hmm? Hmm? And she "Immediately, like no." Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> there's yeah, it's just just that. There's so many like great things between her, him, uh, uh, Poe and Finn, like. Like, oh, you, you're gonna tell, talk about this one, you know, when Post on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know there was other stuff. Mm-hmm. I really should have taken. Oh, the like, Spice Runner when they get the Kajimi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> were, you, were, you a storm, were, you, were you a Spice Runner? Were you a Stormtrooper? Were you, were you a Spice Runner? Were you, you a scavenger? scavenger? <laughs> we just all night. <laughs> we just all night. <laughs> it's like the, the timing. I think what really, when it boils down to the way JJ handles the humor, and I think Kaznan talked about this too, the, the writer, you, you know, for, um, you know, he's been a part of the prequels he had a big hand in solo the force awakens he said he said it's like it's goofy the movie's goofy on, on, on its own it's a space it's a space story it all and is to like, an extent i think he, he is alluding to like the characters aren't goofy the moments are goofy you know what i mean like yeah. in in like force awakens and, and rise of skywalker the the moment within is humorous and but the characters aren't purposely cracking jokes it's a little bit more like that in Rise of Skywalker, but I, I would say The Force Awakens is more like that because a great example I would think is uh, the moment where they're, where Ray is fixing the motivator on the Falcon, and and Finn is handing handing her tools. That's one of my favorite moments. And like yeah, the moment, moments. the moment is supposed to be tense because they need to fix the Falcon because if they don't, you know, things can go really go south really quickly. But like she's like, hand me the bonding tape now. No. no, no, the, the one, one I'm, I'm pointing, pointing to. to. <laughs> She's not cracking a joke at that time. It's just the moment happens to be and I humorous. I just love him just getting frustrated like, and just <laughs> holding everything up. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like, it, it, I think it's, that's the way it, um, Star Wars humor has always like, sort of worked for me. It's like characters aren't meaning to be funny. It's just the moment comes off humorous. Yeah. And I think a great example of that is BB-8. Yeah. Because BB-8 is... He he's a reactive. I have, we have, I have a whole video about this on the channel. It's a very short video, but he's a reactive character. Yes, he's much like Chewie. Like you have no idea what he's saying. So they, they purposely write the script, and people talk talk after BB-8 and Chewie, so you know what they're saying. Yes. Their reactions cue you off to what they're saying, and they go they go to as far as explain this. And when they're writing them for comic books, they'll purposely write in roar 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 or beep 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 beep, and then they'll leave a bubble blank. <laughs> Or, or the next line blank because the, the writers need to go, all right, so he's going to do this and we need to react up to what he's been saying. And it's the way that they've always been written. Yeah. And um, Yeah, I think one of my favorite, and it's so short, you know, mm-hmm. it's so brief, like one of my favorite BB-8 humor moments mm-hmm. is that scene with the, you know, getting on the things, yeah. the bonding tape, whatever. And um, she, Ray asks Finn where his mm-hmm. base is mm-hmm. and he, you know, tells BB-8 to come over. He's like, I'm not... Actually, what this is. And, and he like, just does that little like <laughs> back up. It's so yeah. cute. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just it works. It's funny to me. Yeah, and he's like she she asks like where where's your base? And he's doing this. Uh, <laughs> he's looking back and forth. That's like yeah, BB eight is kind of like the best example of that. Um nonverbal humor. Nonverbal humor. Because I think mean, that, that that works on so many levels because it doesn't matter what language you speak, you can get that that humor. Yeah. Um as far as uh uh, uh, while we're on characters, like what characters do you think you, are your favorite to handle the humor? Because there's so many. Usually, the droids are the humorous ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. they are. Yeah. Well, because well, you look at R two and C three PO. Yeah. They've been there for a billion years. You look at BB eight, K two S O, L three. Yeah. It just a D O. Like he's adorable. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my God, like that, that part in Rise of Skywalker when he's just like nosing through the toolbox. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cute. He's like a little puppy. So cute. I think you always laugh at the squeaky wheel moment. <gasps> squeaky wheel. <laughs> I have a squeaky wheel. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> th- th- thank you. <laughs> Very kind. Very kind. <laughs> I love Dio. No, no thank you. <laughs> he's so cute. 
<laughs> I do. I, I do love Tio. That's a testament to because like, like the droids are always are, are the ones that always fall. The humor falls to the droids because like K two S O. I think is another one of your favorites. I love how dry his humor is. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, like I've seen Rogue One mm-hmm. enough times, but like re- it wasn't until recently that it just really just kicked me right in my like you know mm-hmm. giggle giggles. spot. Yeah, that he was like uh, when 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 the when you know the team decided to break away from the rebels or whatever yeah. and actually be Rogue One. Um, and uh, Cassie and his crew approach uh, Jin, and they're like, oh, we're with you, whatever. Yeah. And then K2 comes up, and he's like, I'm with you. I don't know what the line was. But I'll, like, I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. And it just kind of pauses. He's like, it's Cassie said I had to, or told me it. <laughs> Cassie said I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one, like, when I watched that recently, I just couldn't stop laughing. because I was like, I forgot about Because he's brutally that. honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has so many moments like that. The... the uh, I think the one you always laugh at is his first line in the movie. Congratulations, Congratulations. you're being you're rescued. Being rescued. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> and then there was something else when I feel like wasn't there something he said in that one scene mm-hmm. where she calls him target practice? Yeah. Doesn't he say something funny there? Or because I know well, mm-hmm. I liked Jin's line where she was like saying that she's only really worried that they're gonna. Miss yeah. him and hit her. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. and he's like, it doesn't sound so bad to me. Yeah. <laughs> and he just drops the bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. do love K2, K2 also. K2 does, does, does really well. And I think L3 was supposed to be sort of like that. She misses the mark for me a She does. Bit. She misses the mark a little. I think it was just almost a carbon copy of K2, just a little bit more aggressive. And yes, more over the, over the top yeah. a little bit. Because like... It, again, it, it falls the line that he's not meaning to be humorous. Yeah. It just comes off funny yeah because it's it's a by, like cassie said it's a byproduct of his reprogramming he's just he has no filter mm-hmm. so he just says whatever he comes to his mind it's like oh yeah okay yeah like because they're, they're right. going into the, the shield like uh, the scarab and it's like oh we'll, we'll be killed in the vacuum in space if they shut the shield gate on it's not like me. not me i can vi- i can survive in space it's like he's not making a joke <laughs> he's being honest <laughs> he's, he's a droid and it just happens to be funny with l3 it's almost like they're trying too hard to make it funny yeah. And like if, if they would just dialed back a bit more, like they, she does have some humorous moments. Yeah, that work. Um, yeah, that root that work sometimes. Um I, I think um like uh the like the fresh coat of paint joke kinda works for me. Um I can feel you looking at me yes. really works. But, I, that's probably my favorite moment. Yeah, but there's other ones that's like um it's just like oh it's a little too much. The the equal rights um line kind of it, it, it's a little um, not tasteless. It's just like, oh, it's, it's just like, oh, especially I'm, in the atmosphere of now. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, I really wish they wouldn't have said that. And like, it I get what she's. Weird. Yeah, it feels weird. I get where they're going for it because she's fighting for droid rights. Yeah, but it's like, hmm, it felt ill-timed. Um, yeah, but like, it's just, it, it was too, it was just too much. I think they should have just dialed it back a bit. Um, There's another one that I, I thought was really, really good. Um, oh, the actually funny that, with was L3. Act, yeah. Congratulations, you've been liberated. Scooch. <laughs> that one really works, but like for the most part, it's like uh, it's just a little too on the nose. Yeah, a I wasn't too a forced. huge L three fan. Yeah, but um, yeah, th- that was just like, but like for the most part, like it, it, I think the main theme of the step of of the takeaway from this is that if it's not meant to, if the characters aren't meaning to be funny, but it comes yeah. off as humorous, it works. Yeah, and the way that it's written is good, and um. The Last Jedi is kind of like my least favorite of the hum- how the humor is used because it's a little too yeah. Marvel. Yeah, well, it's a little the, too jokey. A little too, M- I should, a little too MCU, I should say. That, like they're trying to inject MCU humor because like, they see all these like because that's some of my problem with the MCU. Most of the time is like, especially Guardians of the Galaxy Two. It's like every character has to have a joke and like a one liner or something. Yeah. To, like everybody has something to say. Everybody has a joke, and that's the way it felt like to me. In the last, in the last uh, Jedi, especially with like um, the reactions that like, and I think you 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 have to say about those the most the reactions that BB-8 gets. There is one part of this movie that makes me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> 
it is and this might work for most people but just it probably on our works end. for kids yeah because at the end of the day people love to bring up the fact that you know why are you getting so upset over these movies they're for kids for the most part, yeah. For the most part, but do you know how many beheadings there are in Star Wars? Yeah. It's who, also not for Who kids. has to take these kids to the movies? Exactly. <laughs> like, there's plenty of grown stuff that happens in these movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, it's not, it's not just yeah. for your seven-year-old. Mm. But, um, oh, my God. It's that one scene. The ATST scene when, they, when he rescues yeah, when Finn they, and Poe. When or Finn DJ and... turns on Rose and Finn and, and they're... You know, they're about to be executed. This is after uh, Holdo goes into hyperspace. Right. Yeah. And um, when, you know, they're they're about to, you know, they're about to, oh, oh, weird, they're trying to behead the two of them. Funny Mm -hmm. how that comes up. But then all of a sudden, you know, whatever stuff goes down. And then you see a walker, an ATSD coming towards Finn and Rose. Yeah, and it's firing on. And it's firing on all the bad guys and whatever. And then you see the top fly open and it's BB-8. I mean... Actually... By, itse- <laughs> by itself, it, it's like, oh, I can roll with that. But I think you have the, the problem you have most is... True, because we've seen droids pilot stuff. I mean, obviously. Yeah. But I don't know. It was mostly the reaction to the reaction, it. reaction, yeah. Because if it just... I feel like the reaction is what cheapened it for me. Yeah. Because if BB-8 really just came in here, just like bing, 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 and shooting all the people, cool, whatever, you know, we've mm-hmm. seen we've seen stuff like that before. But it was that moment where they look at each that other. Finn and Rose, they have that like, and they like look at each other. Yeah. And like, I'm like, I just oh, want to rip my hair out until I'm bald. <laughs> and I think I hate that moment. And I, and I think why that it doesn't work is because. That that whole point that we have is like your characters aren't meant to be humorous, and I think the reason why um, JJ's humor works is like the characters don't react to it that way. When your characters in your universe acknowledge how ridiculous this is, yeah, it like you said, it cheapens, cheapens it. the moment. When your characters within the universe recognize that this really doesn't belong here, yeah, then you as the audience member is going to be like, yeah, it doesn't belong there. Yeah, because there's another moment with um, that opera singer on Canto Bite when she's like, ah, yeah. and another reaction from Finn. He turns, basically turns to the camera and it's like, what was that? Hmm. It's like if you. Oh yeah, while well, they're riding on. You're the, riding yeah. on the on the father. It's like if you would have taken that shot out, I can forgive it. But your characters are with, by a little. Yeah, within the universe are recognizing that this is off. This it's does like, not belong here. It's like you're just going, wow, look at how crazy and zany we are here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy yeah. and everything's so funny yeah. and quirky. And, and it, it, it's kind of a disappointment because BB-8 was this amazing character in The Force Awakens. Everybody responded so well to this character because he was used so well, because he's a reactive character. And the, his reactions got humor. Yeah. He's used almost like a clown in, in The Last Jedi, where like it's oh, almost yeah. cartoonish. And also, um, I also wasn't a huge fan of... Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of, you know... <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of On Canto Bite mm-hmm. when that drunk patron went up and started trying to put coins in BB-8. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Funny moment. Mm-hmm. Somebody's drunk. Drunk people are funny. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes. Not always. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but then later on, when, oh, you when know, he's shooting, yeah. yeah, when they like escape from the jail cell and mm-hmm. it's like DJ and BB 8, and BB 8 all of a sudden just starts like shooting all the coins at a guy, and the guy's like, Whoa, and like falls over <laughs> because coins are shooting. Well, no, because DJ um, bonks him on the head of his boots. I guess. But I just, I honestly, like, I just thought it that, was silly. That didn't bother me as much until BB 8 goes up. The oh, whole, the gun, yeah. the blowing the smoke off the gun barrel. That is kind of where, it, again, they go a step too far. It's like he's a droid. He doesn't breathe. Uh, he doesn't have lungs yeah. to and be able to make a, you know. And and it's going back to this point that we have that it's cr- characters aren't creating humorous moments. The moment comes off as humorous. Yeah. When you like throw it in my face, like look at how funny this was. Yeah. Like wow, <laughs> crazy. Mm-hmm. It just takes. It yeah. sucks out the humor. For yeah. Me. And it's not to say there weren't humorous moments in the in the Last Jedi that didn't work for us. I'm I sure think there one were. that is, it's very subtle. Um, when when uh, Luke and uh, Ray are on o- Octo and they're in the the, the, um, the tree and like he asks like where are you from? She goes yeah. nowhere and she's like no nobody's from nowhere. Jakku, oh, okay that is know. pretty much nowhere. And then also on Octo, mm-hmm. it tiptoes on the line between like mm-hmm. 
oh, humor and all right, mm -hmm. all right, I can appreciate that is when you know she reaches out yeah. and he like tickles her with the leaf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and right on the line of like. Eh. That worked really well for it me. It worked, it, but it was real close to not working. And the reason it worked for me is because it's Luke, sort of doing the same things Yoda did to him. Yeah, and it, it sort of translates because like as a martial artist, my you've met you've met my my grandma before that. He's scary. he's scary, scary. He's like this big, it seems, yeah. but he's terrifying. But he has <laughs> the biggest sense of humor. And he's super goofy. He's super goofy. And that's my experience. And that's the same experience you see with Yoda uh, Yoda and Luke on, on Dagobah. The same humor you see with Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's just their masters just playing with their students. Because that's, that's what masters mess with do. Them. They yeah. mess with them to you know get them riled up. And, and, uh, and test them and sometimes. Test, yeah, test them sometimes. So And... And uh, Yoda does it to Luke again in The Last Jedi. Yeah. And like that, that, that's that type of stuff because, oh man, that, that's another thing that Yoda did. It's because it's subtle, but it's great. And it's so Yoda. Where like. He, it's so Yoda. Yeah. But where <laughs> where uh, Luke is like, oh, you burnt the sacred Jedi text. And he goes, oh, read them, have you? And he, yeah. and he and like, well, I don't know. It's like page turners, they were not. It's yeah. Like, got that little head tilt and like, oh, read them, have you? I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's such a humorous Yoda moment. I love having that, but like, there's there there are small things in Last Jedi that I thought worked, but for the most part, the humor is just like it was just mm -hmm. too in your face for yeah. me. Yeah. And I mean, I guess while we're on the topic of our not so favorite <laughs> things, let's talk about the prequels. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there are the prequels are um, again, it's generational, and, and it's not like it. It's not like none of it works. Yeah. There's parts that work, and there's parts that are like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I think the one that works for me is in, in Attack the Clones, where it like it's like Anakin's, like, oh, we thought we'd come come and rescue you, and Obi Wan being Obi Wan, oh, good job. <laughs> Obi Wan is so sassy in the prequels. <laughs> He's so sassy, yeah. and but, I love it. Yeah, but I think the one that I think almost everybody agrees on is the one humorous thing that just didn't work for almost everybody. Uh oh, it's Jar Jar. Jar. And it's not Ahmed it's, Best. No, yeah, it's not on a fault of Ahmed Best at all. It's just no. He did the best he could mm -hmm. with what the tools he was given. Yeah, but I, but mm -hmm. I feel like out of all of the episodics, mm -hmm. I feel like it could be very much argued that the Phantom Menace was the most geared towards children. It starred a child. Yeah, and it had. It had a little moment of, you know, potty humor. <laughs> fart and poop jokes. <laughs> you know? Literal fart and poop jokes. Jar Jar yeah. steps in poop. I <laughs> and he hope he farts yeah. in the Boon's Eve classic. It's always, I don't care how old you are. It's yeah. funny, but it's especially funny for children. <laughs> <laughs> and also 30 something year old. <laughs> but, you know, it, I, in my opinion, I think Phantom Menace is the one that most yeah. likely, mostly appeals that. to kids. It stars a nine-year-old. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how old. What's his face? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, no, don't, don't, don't. Let me get there on my own. Okay. Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd, yeah, there you go. I don't know how old Jake Lloyd actually was when they filmed. I don't mm -hmm. know if he was actually also nine or whatever, but, yeah. you know. But the Jar Jar humor, it just seems yeah. like it was very juvenile, but mm -hmm. then again, it's a movie for kids. Yeah. So you can't really complain about it that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't for the most part. I really can't think of any other like humorous moments out of the, out of the prequels. I don't know why. Maybe because it, like it, I don't see him as. I feel like it's mostly Obi Wan and his just little like jabs at Anakin. Yeah. You know, here and there. Uh, no, no swear jokes when he's talking about R two. I mean, that yeah. one, that one kind of works. And when he's like, "Oh, you saved me nine times," and oh, that yeah. one time doesn't count. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh. The, did you just say that elevator scene where he was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, no, no Zwar jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. actually, I feel like the... Well, there, there is a moment with 3PO in, in uh, Phantom Menace where he's like, my parts are showing, my goodness. <laughs> like, that worked a little bit, but, like, for the most part, it's just, like, Jar Jar is more, like, he's, he's like... He's, like, it. He, he's pretty much it, and he's more physical humor like sort of like trying to be like a clown yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna stick my tongue in this laser and then like yeah. <laughs> see my skeleton like i'm in bugs bunny or yeah. something and i know you don't like this part when he's at, when they're at dinner he gets he grabs the fruit and oh, jar and uh, qui-gon grabs his tongue hate it hate it hate <laughs> it it's so stupid so stupid yeah 
Um, I don't think he's meant to be funny, but I find Watto very funny. I do too. I don't get the hate on Watto. I love Watto. I love Watto. Him and his weird chaps. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think he's hilarious. He's not yeah, supposed and that, to be. That's a perfect example of where the humor actually worked when Qui-Gon is trying to do the mind trick. And I was like, no, the, no, no, they won't. <laughs> you think you're some kind of Jedi? Like, yeah. like, that's a moment where it works. I think yeah, all the stuff with Waddle kind of works for me too. Like um, in the Attack of the Clones, when he's when he realizes Anakin the first time, he does a little, oh little jump God. and his wings pop out. I, I when we watch that movie, I will rewind it and I will watch that part about ten <laughs> times in a row. Like Anakin puts down whatever he yeah. just fixed, and he's just like sitting there, his big old belly, he's just like <laughs> sitting there, and then he just like flutters when he knows. <laughs> I I don't know why, but that just tickles yeah. me. So. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up in a little bit more because um, you know shorter episodes. So let's talk. Let's just touch on then uh, maybe solo a little bit. We, no, we talked about, we talked all, about three. All, all three. But I want to get to your favorite use of humor. Your favorite. Oh god. Your favorite, and I think you. Um, I want you, I want you to kick this off, and I, I actually want to end the episode with this because you find these characters the funniest, and I. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Okay, cool. I'm, and, I, I'm with I'm, you. and I'm turning around on this because every time we watch these characters <laughs> and every time you laugh, I'm like, okay, I get it now. Because at first, it's like, oh my God, because it came off as juvenile at first it for is. me. The first time watching these characters, I'm trying I'm trying to bury the lead here. Mm. Um, and like, they're so funny. And like, I was like, oh, it's like, it was cringeworthy at times, but the more <laughs> I watch them with you, I'm like, okay. I will laugh every time. Okay. I'll let you reveal. Uh, <laughs> mostly in the Clone Wars movie, but also a little bit in the Phantom Menace. Yeah. But mostly the Clone Wars movie. Be one battle joy. <laughs> oh my god, they're so funny. <laughs> oh my god. What, so I let wanna, me just list some of the ways I that I find them funny. I want to know what makes them so funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming around on, on them too. But like. Every time you watch it, you're like, oh, I'll rewind it. I love that moment. Like, what is it about the battle droids that you find so funny? I think it's the stark contrast between how serious some of the characters are trying to be and how stupid and ridiculous the battle droids are. Like, all right, we'll start it off with, you know, we're on Teth, right? And oh, is Anakin this? and Ahsoka just got away from Massage Ventress. She is so serious the whole movie. Mm -hmm. You know, she never, she never breaks you know, mm -hmm. and a droid, a battle droid comes up to her. I don't remember exactly what he said, mm -hmm. but he's like, you know, should we inform Count Dooku they got away or yeah. whatever? And she says something back. Or no, she what didn't I, even say anything. She just like, she, she force pushes him more. She force pulls him over the side of the cliff and he's just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and it sounds I, so I, dumb and it probably doesn't sound funny at all, but it's hilarious. I love, me. I love that analogy of it, the stark contrast between the characters. Because They're ridiculous. <laughs> and like, okay, also on Teth, when, you know, um, Ahsoka right. and uh, uh -huh. Anakin, they first, with, and they arrive with all the clones and the battle droids are shooting at them and whatever. Yeah. And then one of the battle droids falls off the cliff and he's like, get back here, Sergeant. <laughs> He's falling off a cliff. What, what do you think he's going to do? I want to point out this moment that you always, you always laugh at, and I've rewound it several times just to get your reaction. It's when there's when Rex is surrounded by the battle droids and Obi-Wan comes in to save them, and Rex says, we got you outnumbered. This was probably one of the first moments that I found funny with the battle droids. We've got you outnumbered, and they're like, Outnumbered. Wait a minute. <laughs> One, two. And he goes on to count the number of troops he has. <laughs> it's so good. Because <laughs> it's ridiculous. You got all these clones who are trained to kill. We got you surrounded. We're going to kill you all. Wait a minute. One, <laughs> two, three. And their voices are just funny, too. I remember the one that you can't. There's a newer one that you notice when. Um, God, what is in the movie where his voice cracks? God. He's one of the battle droids goes up to Asajj Ventress and he's informing her of something and I'm probably not going to do it any justice because it's hard to make your voice crack. But he just goes up you. To, I have to inform you. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will also go back and rewatch that a couple of times just for that voice crack. It's just 
I don't know why. The battle droids just really There are me. other couple moments in the Clone Wars 2 that I found really, like the humor really worked where like oh, they get shot, uh, oh, it's Anakin and Sokka get shot down over Tatooine. And they're talking to Obi-Wan. It's like, Anakin, did you get shot down again? And yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are, like, Clone Wars, I mean, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, my God, this ruined Star Wars. Yeah, it's pretty terrible and It's at pretty first. terrible, but the more we watch it. The more I watch it, the more I'm like, this isn't so bad. Yeah. I can especially, watch this. Especially when you connect it to the series. You have no connection to the series. Nah. But, like, it's just a long episode of Clone Wars, and it's this throwaway episode. That I, I think it works, but like the more I watch it with you, especially with the battle droids, it's like, okay, I'm getting it now. And it doesn't, even, it doesn't even stop there in the Clone Wars. It's like in uh, Phantom Menace, it's like uh, Coruscant. Uh, uh, it doesn't compute. Oh, uh, wait, wait a minute. minute. You're under arrest. Uh, you're under arrest. <laughs> Again, I love that analogy. It's a stark contrast to the moment. It's not meant to be funny. But uh, maybe it, a little it, bit. It is, it is meant to be funny when the writing, but like the moment is tense. But then you have this idiot droid that's like, uh, 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 uh when what, you're what, uh, and another one in Revenge of the Sith when R2 comes out, uh, when they're, <gasps> when they're, yeah. um, caught by the ray shields and like, they're all, well, R2 come and re- loose the ray shields and as they say it, he comes running and runs into the wall. It's like, oh my God, he comes up blazing into that room and just full speed runs into the wall. That's hilarious too. <laughs> <laughs> and then the B2, the super bad droid is like, ow, ow, and he kicks him over. <laughs> <gasps> I'm, oh, you're, tur- you're turning me around on the battle droids, <laughs> the humor, because... They are funny. I feel like there is another moment that I'm forgetting. Is it in Clone Wars, or is it... Probably. In- mm-hmm. uh, is it just fire right there, or is it the lock, the laser lock, like the red one? What? No. The blue one. No. <laughs> That's a good one, too. I think all the moments are pretty funny. So good. I, I really, really have a, a deep appreciation for the battle droids <laughs> and the comedic relief that they offer. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> so other than that, are there any other characters that you think, like, who works for you the best with Clone Because for me, I think it's Poe, especially in, yeah. in Rise. I think he, he really delivers uh, on the comedic relief in, in the, in the I sequel agree. trilogy. I agree. In the original trilogy, I feel like it's obviously, it's obviously Han. Han. I feel like in the, f- in the pre- prequels. prequels, it's got to be Obi-Wan. Probably Obi-Wan, yeah, Probably yeah. Obi-Wan. In the sequel trilogy. Probably Poe Probably Poe. Poe and BB-8. BB-8. I feel like Finn has his moments here and there. Mm-hmm. The oh, only... Back to Jakku. <laughs> yeah. Back to Jakku. Why does everyone want to go back to Why does everyone want to go back to Jakku? Yeah, boyfriend got cool boyfriend. <laughs> the one Poe moment that I... Um, well, in 7 and 9, the one Poe moment that I was like... Uh, was the... Who talks first? Who talks I first? love that moment. I don't know. For me, that was a little bit forced. Yeah. It's funny, but it's just a hair over the line that I'm like, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> it was that yeah. one was a little bit too on the nose, but it was it's yeah. it, worked. it worked. It wasn't you know a your mama joker. It wasn't yeah. that stupid look from the last Jedi, but you know, yeah. probably probably pro. Probably pro, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So. The big takeaway you can take away from this episode is, is battle droids are fun. Battle droids are hilarious, <laughs> and I think we'll go ahead and end, it, end this episode here. I'm tr- I want to get these these episodes a little more structured um, because we're all over the place with them, and especially with research. But I have to spend a lot of time on other things. But um, we'll work on it for next week. But um, with that, Nikki D. Monta, where can they find you online? Twitter, um, I, at Twitter, Dimmy D I M M M Y Y Y. For me, uh, on Twitter and Twitch. Not, not streaming very much, but uh, at Trudy Malanta, D I M A L A N T A. Please, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you're listening on, auto, on audio form on Beyond the Shimon podcast feed, rate us, please. Helps us tremendously. And join the squadron if you'd like. Patreon.com forward slash Andrew and Nikki. Anything else we got to plug? I feel like we've gone over. I don't think so. Uh, okay. So, with that, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Going Rogue. May the force be with you. Always. Oh,